I just sat there and chatted away over two videos of making tubing and realized that I was pushing the start button when I should have been pushing the stop button and pushing the stop button when I pushed the start button. Uh, same button, but it just clicked it at the wrong time. Anyway, uh, I am going to try this one more time. I made two types of tubing uh, in Torch Talk Hangouts and put some some pictures of it on Facebook and people responded that they wanted to know what I did and how I did it. Uh, I'm going to do both videos, one each, one of the striper type and one of the, uh, I want to almost call it like a paisley because you can see the swirl patterns. You can't see it there. The light and the refraction are, are kind of crazy. You can see it better that way. Okay. Anyway, I'll show you a picture of it at the end. These aren't the ones that I'm actually making. Um, the video, again, I started when I should have stopped and stopped when I should have started. So I got to do it over again. But you learn persistence pays off. If you screw up and you're frustrated, walk away, gain your composure, come back and try again. That's one thing about glass. It can frustrate frustrate the living daylights out of you if you want it to. And if you realize that once you learn a pattern, once you learn the ideas of what you've got to do, and just do it, the world is your oyster with glass. You can come up with many great and important things to yourself and to others. But in my case, um, this time it's just <laughs> getting over it and doing tubing again. Um, thank you very much for watching. Click like, click subscribe, and enjoy the video. Okay. I keep saying that at the beginning of these because I've had a long day sometimes and it's one way to relieve some stress and pressure just by taking a deep breath and letting it out. And those who have recreational um, and or therapy marijuana, they take a deep breath and let it out too. But I don't partake of that stuff. Uh, I'm not condoning those who do, and I'm not bad-mouthing those who do. I have some great friends in both places. <laughs> I got friends in all places. <laughs> You can see I never got started as a, a a singer. Now, this is going to be a encasement of tubing. And I'm starting. It's sort of like a clay pot coiling, but a little bit different. As you can see, I'm sort of folding it back and forth. Back and forth. And with that, it makes an interesting design pattern in the glass. And it works really well. You know, I'm actually going to kick this up a, a notch. There we go. Make it a little quicker. Yeah, it's a little more molten. <laughs> I think that's where I get this, the it, breathing in and letting all the stress out at the same time. I'm going to do this just a little more until the end of this is over with. I take things right down to the nub. I throw it on the edge and never use it. This way... I've lived off a fringe of a shoestring budget with my glass, and I'll continue to do so. I guess it's a, I wouldn't call it a bad habit. I wouldn't call it a good habit. I just call it a habit. And I have to have it. <laughs> anyway, 
I've enjoyed making these videos, and I've enjoyed a lot of the comments and questions that you have guys had. If you have any more, if you have uh, ideas for up-and-coming videos, it never hurts to ask. And if I can't do it, I'll tell you, nope, can't do that, no way, uh-uh. But the only thing that stops you from doing anything is you telling yourself, can't do it. Now, at this point, the way I wove it back and forth, there's a few holes. Oh, look at there. Seal that up real quick. There's a few holes. But what I do is I basically heat it up, blow it in and out a little bit, and also sort of push it back and forth together and seal up any small holes as you do that. And as you can see, I've only got like about two inches, maybe three at the most, that I'm working with to do this piece of tubing. I'm going to stretch it out very, very thin to almost four, maybe five inches. And there's a re method to that madness. I sometimes encase it twice, but if I make it thin enough to begin with, you only have to encase it once. Okay. Now all that I'm doing, you can do with a single flame. When I first started, I had a national torch tip, a torch, national torch. With the number five torch tip, you can do just about everything that I'm doing and then some, okay? Coming up and get her down. There's a little bit of color contamination at the end. Now what I'm doing, actually I'm going to kick it up even higher. I'm a single flame in the middle. And I am not forcing that glass on there. I am lightly drawing. I'm heating up the glass rod. And it's bathing a little bit of the tubing, but the main thing is heating up that glass rod, and I'm drawing it onto this tubing. Easy does her. You're not forcing it on. You're layering it on. Now, as I do this, line for line, between each rod that I'm layering on is an air line. And in that airline, the air sort of, it, it sort of finds a way to go all the way down to the end of the tube because that airline goes all the way down to the end of the tube. As you're encasing it, you'll see this. But I usually start over here at this side when I start melting the rod in and all that air is forced out and down towards the bottom and out of the tube. Yes, so sometimes there is a few odds and ends of air that gets trapped. All right, reaching up for, I'm not going to weld that one together, but I will weld it together later. Getting my next piece, what I'm using to melt this tube with is 8 mil shot. The, um, the color that I coil potted was blue exotic. And what I'm doing now again is just layering this clear or sleeving this clear or encasing this clear or blue with clear. Excuse me. Dyslexia. You got that clear? Yeah. Right. Um, I am not forcing it. 
As you can see, I'm heating up the rod and layering it in. Line upon line. Looks like one more should do it. No, I'm going to have to go to one side and layer one more on the other side. There we go. Okay. This is where the blowing blow hose. I've got one on this blow hose and swivel. As you can see, I'm turning that. That swivel is spinning, but not tying your hose in a knot. It's worth getting, spending about fifteen to twenty dollars on if you can find them cheaper. Not your own prerogative. Now again, all I'm doing now is heating up this tube. I'm bringing all of this clear to be encased over the color. That brighter orange spot that you see is where a little bit of clear didn't get layered on well. But it'll be fine. And again, as you're doing this, I start at the top and work my way down. And those air lines keep forcing the air that's made in the tube down. To the bottom. This is all done by hand as you can see. You can use uh, rollers to support what you're doing. If you got the tools use them. If you don't got the tools don't let it stop you. This it makes the job a little easier. But coming over, overcoming adversity or overcoming obstacles is a good thing. Anyway, I'm getting there. Just another little bit to go. Now one of the ways I do this is I continually spin and swirl that glass. Now the way I do it is just let I leave it as is and it leaves an interesting almost want to call it a paisley design or wispy smoke because it goes back and forth and swirls it looks good. Okay, coming down to the nub. And those nibs are a little bit thicker. Than the rest of that tubing. And try to even heat that up. And melt that in. Now I'm going to sort of shrink and collapse that a little bit. And stretch it into one thickness or one width.
I've been lightly puffing and moving stuff around as I do this. It only comes with practice, and yes, you're probably going to puff out and blow out some thin walls sometimes. And it only comes with practice if you get a little better. There we go. Sorry. Um, and there you have one blue exotic. Almost looks like green exotic, but I'm pretty sure it was blue exotic. And once the color's cool, I'll do a quick video and let you see the swirl patterns that go on. Um, I plan on trying to do a video on some of this dealing with beads. Uh, that's what you can turn this tubing into. I never liked working with uh, bead release muck that you put on uh, the, the mandrels. Um, just never did. Uh, so I learned to make mine hollow and keep them hollow to begin with. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day. Okay, you can see the swirl patterns, the wisp of smoke look or, or paisley looks like I like to call it. And this is done with blue exotic and encased in clear. I also want to show you The same one, done a little earlier, blue exotic, cased in clear, and it comes out a little different. It, the design patterns can be replicated, but they can never be made exactly the same way again. Thanks for watching. Click like, click subscribe, and always enjoy your day, because I try to, <laughs> and there are some times you can't, but enjoy.